Welcome to Canada's crown jewel, Jucasa Motor Speedway. Today, 16 of Canada's top racers vie for top spot in the 2020 NASCAR Pink Tea Series Fan Cave Challenge. The NASCAR Summer Series was billed as a short track shootout. Six races at three of Canada's toughest bull rings. Two racers have surfaced as title contenders. Jason Hathaway has visited Victory Lane in the Orange Express and was a contender every time out. Laval, Quebec's Kevin Lacroix has been in lockstep with Hathaway. Solid finishes has Lacroix in title contention as we wrap up the 2020 season. Jucasa Motor Speedway hosts the finale of the True North Strong and Fast right here on TSN. Hello and welcome to the Pinties 125 from Canada's Crown Jewel, the sixth and final stop of the 2020 NASCAR Pinty Series season. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me in the tower is Adam Ross and veteran pit reporter Todd Lewis is patrolling trackside for us here today. But Adam, it really has been a short track shootout throughout the 2020 season and we wrap it up with a heated points battle on our hands here at Jucasa. It basically comes down to two drivers. Jason Hathaway and Kevin Lacroix. Both of those drivers with amazing victories this year, but what's amazing to me, Dave, when they're not winning, they're still finishing in the top five, making the most of every time on the racetrack. And what's interesting about those two drivers is neither one has won a NASCAR Pinty Series champion. They've both been runners up, but they've never been a champion. And if you look at the head-to-head -head career stats between these two drivers, they are impressive. What's interesting to me, Jason Hathaway is an oval track specialist. All of his wins in the series, with the exception of one, have come on short tracks. Kevin Lacroix entered the series exactly the opposite. He was dominant on road courses, but he had a lot to learn on the oval tracks. Well, it turns out he's a pretty good learner because the last couple of years, Kevin Lacroix can be just as dominant on a short track as he can on a road course. And over 2,000 lap led, laps led for both of those drivers. Just an astonishing feat. And with more on today's Pinty's 125, let's send it down trackside to Todd Lewis. Dave, before we go down to Todd, Let's give a real shout out to Todd Lewis. This is his 26th year of covering Canada's top stock car racing series on TV, and that's pretty impressive. Yeah, that's a lot of miles on pit road, Todd. Certainly as guys worn out a lot of pairs of shoes and enjoyed every second of it covering this series going all the way back to Cascar in 1995. Amazing, 26 years in the series and only 29 years old. Okay, now seriously, these drivers in this final race of the season are looking for something that we're all looking for in our life, balance. What did they learn the last time they raced here at Jucasa Motor Speedway? Finding the balance of the car. So many of the drivers talked about a loose race conditions and a number of them have taken a big swing, including the 74 of Kevin Lacroix who said his car was very loose and they hope to make significant changes. The winner of the last race though at Jucasa, Jason Hathaway was very good. They are just making a small air pressure adjustment. We'll see who finds the balance when we come back to Jucasa Motor Speedway and the green flag for the Pinties 125. The 2020 NASCAR Pinty Series finale from Jucasa Motor Speedway is brought to you by Pinty's, making great food fun. By Total Quartz Engine Oils. By PartyCasino.fun and by WeatherTech, the ultimate interior protection for your vehicle. Dave, once again, the weather is beautiful for a 125 lap race here this afternoon. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's have a look at the quick, quick starting grid. DJ Kennington, the Castrol Edge Dodge rolls out first. Dexter Stacy in the 92 on the outside of row one. Jason Hathaway will start third in the three, then it's Cole Powell in the 32. Let's take a look back to row number three. That's where we find Todd Cresswell in the 98, Anthony Simone behind the wheel of the number one Dodge. Row four, Jason White from Sun Peaks, British Columbia in the 28, Kevin Lacroix in the 74. Rounding out the top 10, we've got J.R. Fitzpatrick in the 24, Larry Jackson in the 84. Row number six has Connor James in the eight, L.P. Dumoulin in the 47. 
Row number seven. That's where we find Matthew Kingsbury, another one of our Quebec drivers in the 75, and Brett Taylor, another driver from Western Canada. Donald Teach is behind the wheel of the 80, and Alex Tagliani in the 18. They make up row number eight, and the final row here today. And for the E3 Spark Plugs race analysis, just like all the races, 125 laps the distance, 21 degrees and clear, and Jason Hathaway, our most recent winner. And we should note that the starting lineup set by virtue of a draw, so it really was luck of the draw that set this field. And Jason Hathaway is in a great position, leading the points. He's closer to the front of the field than the back. And we have a look at one driver who really needs a good run today, Alex Tagliani in that 18. Yeah, struggled in race number five here in 2020, but the field is set. Few more scrubs of those tires to get them up to speed. The general tires underneath these race cars as the Dodge Ram 2500 pace truck will pull off to pit lane. DJ Kennington will pace the field for the 14th time in his NASCAR Pinty's series career and you can hear them get on the loud pedal as we are underway here in the Pinty's 125. Dexter Stacy holding DJ Kennington as low as he can on the racetrack. Doing a good job so far, but it looks like Kennington is going to lead lap one. Dexter Stacy in that 92 Bullies truck stop Chevrolet. That car really came alive the last stop we made here at Ducasa. And there you can hear Joe Chisholm Jr. The spotter for DJ Kennington indicating Dexter Stacy still out there, but Stacy had a great run in race five. We've got a problem. The 84 of Larry Jackson up against the wall in turn four. He was right up to that outside wall, and we see him save the car. Anthony Simone doing something similar there in one and two. Good look at Jason White making a move underneath the 32 of Cole Powell. As we ride on board with J.R. Fitzpatrick in a car named Springsteen. You can see it on the dash. Fitzpatrick right around the bottom of the racetrack. The car's rotating well. What we've seen from him most of the year is it's tough to get back on the throttle without kicking that car loose. It's also tough to get back on the throttle when Kevin Lacroix is applying this sort of pressure. Yeah, and, and one driver who's not having a problem getting back on the throttle is the driver that bumper-to-bumper -to -bumper total number 74, Kevin Lacroix, as he tucks underneath the 24 to complete the pass. Coming up as we run on board with Donald Teach, who moves underneath the teammate of the 74, that's Matthew Kingsbury. There we see Alex Tagliani in the 18, racing with the one of Anthony Simone we talked about. I wouldn't say their struggles, but the finishes just aren't where we would expect them to be for Alex Tagliani. No, and of course, he missed the first two events of the 2020 season here in Canada, was racing a Kyle Busch-owned truck on the Daytona road course. I think that's a good reason to, to yeah, not be available. But now he's right in the thick of things. Oh, into the wall goes Kingsbury right in front of Taglian. That exit off a of turn two, you really get very close to the outside wall. We've seen a couple of drivers put a black mark on the white wall here at Jucasa Motor Speedway. Donald Teach, after getting around J.R. Fitzpatrick, starting to drive away from that purple PartyCasino.Fun24. There we have a look at Cole Powell in the 32. And here we've got a battle for the second spot. Jason Hathaway in the three, trying to take it over from Dexter Stacy. As you mentioned off the top, Jason Hathaway visited victory lane in race number five. But the leader, DJ Kennington, is opening up a bit of a gap now on this battle for second spot. There you see the gap. The car way off in the distance, that's DJ Kennington in the Castrol Edge Dodge. Simone looking to the inside of Cole Powell. Powell's trying to keep him as far down the racetrack as he can to pinch off his line, but Simone's got a good car, and it looks like he was going to complete that pass. Good look at Matthew Kingsbury in the Duro King number 75. As he, some smoke coming from the front end of that Dodge Challenger. Under braking, the smoke seemed to go away, but we'll keep an eye on that one. Something is amiss. He's sitting in 13th spot, is Kingsbury. Jason White looking for the third position from Dexter Stacy as we ride on board Kevin Lacroix. That's the best view in the house of this battle. Yeah, Stacy. 
Caught up in that outside lane. Caution has come out for the 75 of Matthew Kingsbury. And he has come to rest there in turn four. You could hear him fire that car up and, and rev it right up to the rev chip. He's got a flat tire on the right rear. You saw the back end of that car squatted down, so he may have issues that might be more than just a, a necessity to change that general tire. Looking up at the very top of the screen, yeah, it, it, it went down suddenly on Kingsbury. Could have been a product of smacking the wall earlier. Now you saw the smoke coming from the Duro King 75 during that last green flag run. So the crew taking a look and they'll try and get that car repaired as we look to get things back underway. The field doubled up in behind the pace truck. A quickie yellow as we look to get things going once again here in the Pinty's 125. DJ Kennington, Jason Hathaway will make up the front row. Look at who's behind them. Jason White, a great run, and Dexter Stacy still inside the top five. DJ Kennington has led every lap so far, and this Pinty's 125 gets a great restart. Pulls out in front of Jason Hathaway. Everyone behind that top two remains too wide. Did you see the 74 shot out of a cannon on that restart as Kevin Lacroix tucks underneath the 28 of Jason White and up into third spot. Kevin Lacroix has a rocket ship at the drop of the green. Lacroix knows he's got to go win this race if he hopes to win the championship. And it's out of his control because Jason Hathaway just has to have a solid result and he should be able to lock down his very first NASCAR Pinty Series title. We talked about Alex Tagliani in the Rona Viagra number 80, 18. As a car goes around, you heard it before you saw the 92 of Dexter Stacy goes for a loop and that's a caution. L.P. Dumoulin did a masterful job of avoiding that spin. Dan Hawkins with the yellow flag waving from the starter stand, and it looks like Dexter Stacy going to be able to take off without losing a lap. This is the Pinty's 125 on TSN. Welcome back to the sixth and final round of the 2020 NASCAR Pinty Series season. We're at Jucasa Motor Speedway for the Pinty's 125 here in Nell's Corners, Ontario. Just like last time, I'll let you guys fire off. I'll jump in. I'll start six away. Once again, it'll be DJ Kennington on the inside in the 17. Jason Hathaway up high in the three. It's a drag race down into turn one. 100 laps to go as the drivers cross the line for that restart. Look at how tight they are off of turn two. It's a beautiful rivalry among a couple of drivers from southwestern Ontario, Dave. And finally, Jason Hathaway leads a lap. when it comes to the overall points picture. Here in 2020, you lead a lap, you gain some bonus points. It's as fine a short track as you're gonna see anywhere in the world, Dave. Oh, Jason White with a big wiggle. And, and that's with the beauty of this place. There is a lot of room to gather it back up when you do have a wiggle like that. But Jason White in the 28, still inside the top five. He's hoping to run with the truck series at both Talladega and Phoenix later on this year. It's so much fun to watch Jason White's travels and be able to cheer for, for another Canadian down there. He's had some good runs on those super speedways. I'm just in awe watching this battle. <laughs> it's fantastic as they go side by side at the front. Look at Tiege in the 18 of Alex Tagliani. That is a battle for fifth spot as Tiege sneaks through. So give the 80 a uh, spot inside the top five as Lacroix now moves underneath the three of Jason Hathaway. 
Boy, Hathaway closed right in on Lacroix in the middle of that corner. How about we talked about Jason White in fourth? How about Anthony Simone almost up in the top five as well in his Silver Line Tools number one? Now we've talked about his horrible luck here in 2020. Looks like today his luck is a little bit better, sitting comfortably in the top ten. There he is there in the one behind the 18 of Taglani, just ahead of LP Dumoulin, who has a victory to his credit so far this year. Yeah, everybody in basically the top 10 is still within striking distance. These cars are so close as we ride on board Dumoulin in the eighth position. Look at Dumoulin, a little bit different entry into turn three, now off of four, compared to Anthony Simone, just looking for that slight advantage. We saw this in the last race here at Jucasa. We saw a lot of drivers choose to run higher on the racetrack, whether it was a foot off of that white line, whether it was three feet off. Simone, it looks to me as though he's trying to plant the left side on the white line. Kevin Lacroix normally is down there searching, but here we see Jason Hathaway. It's the shortest way around the racetrack, but the car has got to be handling right to make it work. And up in the outside lane, you can keep your momentum up, except when you get a little nudge from the 80 of Donald Teague as Jason White is finding out off of turn four. Here's the door open. Battle for fourth. Not much of a battle as Teague goes through. It, it, it looked to me as though Jason White allowed him to go by. I mean, Teague earned the inside line. White backed out a little bit. He's going to follow that rear bumper of the 80 machine. Remember that 80, a brand new car, brand new team to the NASCAR Pinties series. Dave White championship winning crew chief with Andrew Ranger a year ago, put that together this year. They have had their struggles today. Donald Teach led 41 laps here in race number five, so he had some speed, but faded badly. And you want to talk about names? We talk about Thompson an awful lot. Don Thompson Jr., the crew chief of the 74. Don's brother, Dennis Thompson, a very good race car driver and a very good spotter in the series. He's the spotter today for Jason White in the 28. There's Brett Taylor catching that group as LB Dumoulin and Alex Tagliani battle side by side. Anthony Simone just took that sixth position. He inches closer to the top five. And there again, Dumlin, you see where the car on the inside can, can rotate through the corner faster. But when it comes to getting the pedal down and putting that horsepower to the ground, the outside group really has an advantage. Here. Yeah, and now that the outside lane is really quite good, you can see that Tagliani is, watch his hands. They're not moving around as much as they would have been earlier on in this run. He's comfortable on that outside groove, able to keep up the momentum. Now I say, say that, he ducks in behind the 47. Jason Hathaway on the inside of Kevin Lacroix. They'll race side by side out of turn number two. That's a battle for seconds, but we do have a car off in turn three. That's the 32 of Cole Powell. There you see him stopped up against the turn three wall. I don't believe he made any contact. We don't see any black marks, but he has come to a stop, and that's the reason for the latest caution. This has not been a day to remember for Cole Powell, a former winner in the series, a top runner. It has been a struggle. Same with the 18 of Alex Tagliani. And the 92 of Dexter Stacy down pit lane. You can see just minor adjustments. Tire pressures on the bully truck stop number 92. The 24 of J.R. Fitzpatrick and the Party Casino Dot Fun entry also down for some adjustments. So DJ Kennington again going to fire off from the pole position. This time he's got a different neighbor. Kevin Lacroix in the 74 is going to fire second. The always aggressive Donald Teach in the 80 will line up on the outside of row two. But keep an eye on that red and white number 74 up on the outside. Kevin Lacroix was so good on that last restart. We'll see what he can do here as the green flag waves once again. Kevin Lacroix pushing the limits on that restart right up alongside, maybe a little ahead of the race leader, DJ Kennington. Kennington will slot into second as Lacroix uses that momentum up on the outside, and he will lead a lap. So bonus points for the bumper-to-bumper -to -bumper Total Lubricants Dodge Challenger. Oh, we're three wide. Anthony Simone into the top five. Brett Taylor way up out of the groove in the 33. That's going to cost him a lot of spots, and Larry Jackson brushes the wall on the outside. He was the meat in that three-wide sandwich just a little while ago. 
and lost traction, touching the wall for the second time in this race. It doesn't matter how lightly you brush the wall here at Jucasa. As a driver, you feel it. You notice it, and it gets your attention. This is back up front, though. Look at the Castrol Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington. Pasting it to the inside of the 74, looking for the lead as the oh, caution we've got flag one flies. Around. In turn number four, we've got a car backwards. It is Dexter Stacy again in the 92. Did a good job of refiring and getting going, but the caution had already flown, so. That lead battle that we're watching so closely will be reset. We'll take a quick break while we do it. You're watching the NASCAR Pinty Series on TSN. Welcome back to the Pinty's Fan Cave Challenge on TSN. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me in the booth is Adam Ross. And Todd Lewis, a veteran pit reporter, is trackside for us here today. As we get set for the restart, Kevin Lacroix will start to the inside. DJ Kennington upstairs. And again, Lacroix, a huge jump at the drop of the green. Jason Hathaway takes advantage. He'll drive to the inside of Kennington. Slide up the racetrack. A little bit of contact. Just a little bit between friends as they use each other through one and two. And now they open a gap as Hathaway tries to stick it to the inside. That car not sticking at all. Well, not with a car as quick as DJ Kennington, but he'll line up again in single file behind Lacroix, behind Kennington, deeper in the field. They're going to town. This is a battle for fifth between Anthony Simone in the one, Jason White in the 28, LP Dumoulin in the 47. Now, Jason White in a car prepared out of the DJ Kennington shop has been having a very, very good day. Sitting inside the top five for most of it. Now caught up in the outside lane, and you can see how quickly if your car's not working up there, how quickly it can go backwards. Jason White trying to get back in behind LP Dumoulin, but Dumoulin kind of backed up the corner a little bit. And look at that, J.R. Fitzpatrick to the inside, Tagliani to the bottom of J.R. Fitzpatrick got loose, and that opened the door for the 18 of Tagliani to the inside. And on the outside, it's going to be Jason White who's able to get down in front of the party casino. Fun 24. Scott Steckley will be watching from the pits. Both the 18 <laughs> and the 24 come from the Steckley shop. But have a look back up in front, up at the front. It's the 17 of DJ Kennington to the inside and to the lead. And you see again in three and four, Kennington up the racetrack a little bit. When he went down into one and two, he asserted the line. He moved the line up so Kevin Lacroix was a little bit higher than he would have liked to be. And it got DJ Kennington back out front. Love those shots. You can see both of those drivers in their wheelhouse, doing their work as they pace one and two in front of the field. Now Tagliani moves underneath the 24 of J.R. Fitzpatrick. Brett Taylor in the TCB trailers, number 33. It's a battle for seventh spot between these drivers. Fitzpatrick's car is a little angry under acceleration. It's just giving him some fits there, having to correct quite a bit when he's on the throttle, as we've reached the halfway point of the Pinty's 125. Jason Hathaway is trying to give fits to your second place driver, the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Look at how tight he pulls up behind him. Oh, a little too tight. Oh, yellow flag is out. I was just going to say, if I, oh, and it's a big one. Down the back stretch, the 24 of J.R. Fitzpatrick, the 84 of Larry Jackson, they got together about midway down the back chute, and it looks like Fitzpatrick's going to get the worst of this one as Jackson able to refire and get going. Fitzpatrick with a flat left front tire. He limps that 24 machine into a closed pit lane, but he wants service as quick as he can get it. Have a look from our speed shot. of trouble for Fitzpatrick there and it, let's let's ride with Larry Jackson Fitzpatrick that car was wiggling so hard yeah. Jackson on the throttle trying to avoid it it almost looked like the tire was down he made contact with the outside wall as the crew goes to work to replace the left front they'll try and keep him on the lead lap again the 84 of Larry Jackson will head down pit road two and get some service get things looked at anyway 
Fitzpatrick made significant contact with that wall, both the front end and the back end. So we'll see how that 24 car performs. And we'll be back for more of the Pinty's 125. Welcome back to NASCAR Pinty Series Racing on TSN. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross in the tower and Todd Lewis's trackside. And Adam, we're expecting a big race coming into this one, and this one sure hasn't disappointed. Oh, Dave, the race cars, the smell of the fuel, how could this get any better? And as the race wears on, I get the sense that second groove is really starting to come in. We're going to be in for a great finish. Well, the field lines up behind the 2020 Dodge Ram 2500 pace truck here at Jucasa Motor Speedway. Once again, DJ Kennington down low. Kevin Lacroix up high as they head towards the green flag. They are just about in the restart zone now. And once again, it's a 74. Lacroix gets a jump, and he'll lead them into turn one and two. That seems to me that was a jump. He fired first, got there first, leads off of turn number two. Not the way these restarts are drawn up. Not necessarily. DJ Kennington slots into second. The top four now all single file. This is a battle for fifth between Anthony Simone and the 47 of LP Dubelay. Got to be impressed with that Silverline Tools number one of Simone. And I'm so happy for him after the struggles he's had. Great to see him up there battling with some top-notch cars. There's Alex Tagliani on the inside of LP Dumoulin in that 47. And that Rota Viagra Chevy really has come alive. He's had his struggles here at Tucasa in race number five earlier on in this race, but it's starting to move forward. So any changes that they've made seem to be working. Jason White running in the eighth spot in the 28 machine. He is still right in the mix as well. So is Brett Taylor behind him in ninth. There are a lot of cars still in contention to have a really solid finish. Simone taking a look underneath the 80 of Donald Teach just ahead of this battle for sixth spot that we're watching between Dumoulin and Tagliani. Anthony Simone trying to take over fourth. You wonder, could the Silver Line Tools keep pace with the top three with Lacroix, Kennington, and Hathaway? They are so good. Hathaway won race number five by more than six seconds. Now he sits third. Simone backs off just a little bit from Donald Teach. Let's see if he's trying to get another run. Sometimes you get so close to the car in front of you, David, it sort of ruins your rhythm because you have to be constantly reacting to what they do. Back off a couple of car lengths and take another run, and you might find the move comes to you. Veteran DJ Kennington might be doing exactly that as he's starting to turn up the pressure on your race leader once again. every inch of the racetrack. Have you noticed nobody comes as close to the wall coming off the turns as that 74 at any of the racetracks we've visited this year? He gets the most out of his race car, the most out of the track as well. Look at Simone to the inside of the 80 of Donald Teach. A little bit of contact, just letting him know that he's there. Yeah, taking another swing at the 80 machine. We saw this in the, the first race at Jucasa Motor Speedway. As the race went on, Donald Teach wasn't able to keep the car on the bottom of the track. We've got a battle for the lead. DJ Kennington to the inside. How many times have we said this today already? Alongside the 74 of Kevin Lacroix, another battle for the lead. Kennington with a great run off of turn number four. He knows is ahead of the 74 at the stripe. It's basically a dead heat. Kennington by two one hundredths of a second. But Lacroix looks oh so comfortable in that second lane as he battles back hard as both drivers dive it hard into turn three and four. I just love the onboards, Dave. And the thing is, if you trust the cars you're driving around, you can race that hard. Whoa, Whoa we got problems. Around goes Teach. Simone involved. Oh, and a big hit from the 33 of uh, Brett Taylor. Donald T's trying to get that 80 machine refired. Looks like the radiator punched out of the 33 of Brett Taylor. Let's have a look at this. Simone to the inside of Teach. Little bit of contact off the corner. Teach goes around. LP Dumoulin had nowhere to go. Tag snuck his way through there. And then Brett Taylor, the window closed. Let's have another look. 
Dumoulin got a lot more of that than I thought as he pushed his way through. But the two drivers who got the worst of it, definitely Anthony Simone, who had a great run going, and Brett Taylor in the 33. Have another look on board the 80. Yeah, I was trying to hear for the contact at what point in the turn it happened. You hear the squeal of the tires. And... Now, he got lucky. Nobody else hit him. I mean, Simone hit him again, but no other drivers on the track. And look at the damage to the 47 of L.P. Dumoulin as the crew goes to work. The biggest impact definitely was to Anthony Simone and the 33 of Brett Taylor. The front end of Taylor, the back end of Simone. And there the 80 is down pit lane as they're taking a look at the damage, trying to assess what might be bent, what might be broken. And the crew lets them down and away. There is quite a bit of damage to the back end of that Chevy Camaro. As the crews take a look, we'll take a break. You're on TSN. The cleanup has completed here at Jucasa Motor Speedway after a big mess down the back straightaway involving several cars, but everything reset as we get set to go back to green here on lap 88. Getting down to the final laps of 2020. You can see them go through the oil dry that was left on the exit of turn two, and DJ Kennington right up on the back bumper of the quad. Remember all those gaps that they were giving each other earlier on in this race? That's not going to be there anymore. This is now down to the nitty gritty. They're going to get things going, and don't count out the 17. Kennington, fastest in practice earlier on today, so you know that car is on point. A little further back, you've got Donald Teach, Larry Jackson. L.P. Dumoulin, J.R. Fitzpatrick, all drivers that have been involved in yellow flags and all of them closing in on the top five. Well, the way this story has been playing out is that the 74 of Lacroix gets out, leads about five laps, and then the 17 of D.J. Kennington comes roaring back, and that's exactly what he's doing here. Down to the inside as Kennington makes a move for the lead again. We've seen here before that when a driver spends as much time on the bottom as D.J. Kennington has actually battling for position, it can use up those right side general tires. Let's see if Kennington's tires hang on as we get into the final stage of this race. Two drivers who finished 1-2 in race number five. Hathaway gets into the 74 of Lacroix just a little bit as he moves to the inside and possibly by does dive it in a little bit harder than Lacroix in turn number three, and there he goes through in the Kubota Chevrolet. But between the new race leader and new second place, an interesting stat dug up by our statsman, Bryce Turner. If you look back over the years, over the first seven years of NASCAR history in Canada, DJ Kennington had 19 wins and two series championships. In the last seven years, just one win. Jason Hathaway, three wins in the first seven years. The last seven years, he has 11 wins. So it's almost a reverse scenario between those two drivers. A changing of the tides for sure as we look at Donald Teague. A little bit of body work flapping around on that 80 machine. He's still got a lot of speed. And Jason White right behind him in the 28. Yeah, Donald Teach will no doubt be moving forward with a chip on his shoulder at this point. He was sitting comfortably inside the top five and now has his work cut out for him to try and catch the leader. He goes to work on Alex Tagliani. And Tagliani, I mean, just a beautiful job avoiding that accident on the back straightaway. He's rewarded with a fourth place position right now. But if he looks in his mirror, he's going to see a lot of black. That's the 80 of Donald Teach driving it hard into turn three. Up to the back bumper. Now he tucks to the inside. And Alex Tagliani gives him plenty of room. The 80 will slip through and take the position. As Donald Teach moves ahead, there's a little wave saying thank you very much. Thanks, buddy. And away he goes, and he misses turn three. Slides up the racetrack. There's more to come in the Pinty's 125. an eye on that black number 80 that is the driver on the move he's managed to get around the 74 of Kevin Lacroix now setting his sights on second place and Jason Hathaway Donald Teague is on fire 
He set his sights and he has reached it. He is on the back bumper at half the way. Kevin Lacroix fading just a little bit as Alex Tagliani tries to get a run off of turn four. Backs off and they'll go single file in through one and two, but Tagliani, look at him through the middle of the turn in the Rona Viagra number 18. Tagliani can close up to the back bumper, but it looks like Lacroix is that much better off the, off the corner. Laps are winding down. 16 laps to go in this one. Hathaway is under attack. TJ Kennington comfortably out front, but anything can happen. There's still a lot of battles around the racetrack. We haven't forgotten about your race leader, DJ Kennington. There he is going off into the distance, working lap traffic right now. As we ride on board, your second place driver, Captain Kubota and the Orange Express, Jason Hathaway. The way Donald Teach attacks the corners is just fun to watch as Tagliani has gotten to the inside of Kevin Lacroix. Now that he's there, it's that much more difficult to complete the pass. And of course, this is not the scenario that Kevin Lacroix wanted to see coming into this one as Teach moves to the inside. Remember, that's Connor James in the SSG gloves, number eight. A lap down, he'll hold the inside lane as these two continue to battle. Is this a moment where if you're Jason Hathaway, you swallow your pride and let him go? Well, I mean, he comes in as the points leader. He doesn't need a mess. If he gets taken out in this particular situation, Kevin Lacroix will reap huge points in the WeatherTech point standing. So if you're Jason Hathaway, it might be better to just give him the lane and let him go. Oh, contact out of turn number four. Donald Teach takes the second spot. Hathaway falls back into third. We'll watch those left side tires. You know, that's how you cut a tire, Dave. That can ruin a day. Did you watch Hathaway back off, though? As soon as they made contact, Hathaway backed out of it and let the 80 of Teach go. Hathaway back into the third spot. Teach in second. I don't think Teach can catch DJ Kennington at this point without a yellow flag. But if a yellow flies, it changes everything. Well, we'll tell you that the gap is about four seconds between your race leader in the 17 and second place, Donald Teach in the 80. Kennington, and this screen shows it perfectly. He is all by himself. He's got a significant gap back to Donald Teach. Now Jason Hathaway has dropped back a little bit from Teach. He's sitting in a good spot to win a championship. This has to be DJ Kennington's favorite track, his last win in the NASCAR Pinty Series. And also good news for the driver as Kennington learns that he's able to hold that gap. Five laps to go. As mentioning, his last win in the NASCAR Pinty Series came right here at Jucasa Motor Speedway back in 2018. He's running the top of the racetrack. It's the easiest groove on the car. You don't use the brakes quite as much. You're not stressing the tires. Look at that, Dave. He's a, he's a lane and a half off the bottom of the track. Jason Hathaway comes into this one with a comfortable points lead, now sitting comfortably on the final podium spot, sitting in third. He's doing exactly what he has to do to win his very first NASCAR championship. And that's the point to remember. He's doing what needs to be done. 166 times DJ Kennington has taken the green flag in a NASCAR Pinty Series race. That is an amazing accomplishment. Hats off to Rick Verburn, the crew chief for the 17 team. They have put a very good setup underneath that car. He's nearly untouchable, except for on those restarts for the 74, but matter of time before he got back around him. We ride with Hathaway, and it doesn't look like Jason's pushing all that hard either. I mean, they've got to be telling him, look, stay right where you are. You're having a great run. White flag, one more lap to go. And look at the gap behind DJ Kennington. Almost four seconds, 3.7 seconds as Donald Teach crossed the strike. No pressure, bud. Let's go look at the mirror. Go ahead. Down through three and four. One final time, DJ Kennington's going to win. Pinty's 125. Teach will come home in second, half the way in third, and with that, he will be crowned the champion here in 2020.
And Ducasse has been pretty good to you. Brett got his first victory here last year. Jason had a strong run. Jason won the last race here. And now a championship team for EHR. Wow, wow. Couldn't ask for more, could you? <laughs> wow. Very good. Jason Hathaway and, of course, all the guys, you know, Gary Mead, Donnie Brock, uh, you know, Jeff Thomas, the fellows who are really behind us at the shop. It's not a cliche. It really is what happens. We come here prepared, and uh, we're lucky. That's a combination of uh, good planning and progress. So we got lucky today. Congratulations. Go celebrate a championship. Thank you very much. A championship, a first-time champion for the entire team, along with Jason Hathaway, and the first time in 25 years as a car owner, Ed Hackinson is crowned champion. We'll be back with celebrations from Jucasa Motor Speedway on TSN. A two-time series champion and always likes the big events, and this is a big one. DJ Kennington has won here at Jucasa Motor Speedway. Let's go down to victory lane and Todd Lewis. Todd? At the site of his last victory, DJ Kennington will climb out of the 17 car and celebrate a win once again at Jucasa Motor Woo! Speedway. A tremendous run to close out the 2020 Pinty's Fan Chuck Cave Chuck. Challenge. Woo! DJ Kennington, you had a bit of a struggle in the first race here at Jucasa, but this car was a rocket ship in race number two. Absolutely. Just, I got to thank, you know, it's been a weird year. Everybody knows that. And, uh, Thank NASCAR, Pinty's, everybody for putting this deal on for as hard as it was. And my sponsors, man, uh, Castrol has been with me for <laughs> basically since I was a little kid in 27 years. And thank you, Dave. Uh, thanks, everybody at Wakefield and Castrol for sticking with us. And uh, I know it's a tough year, but they stayed there with us. Let us come out and do what we wanted to do and do what I love to do. And my family, my mom, dad, Jamie, the kids, I love you guys so much. Wish you were here to celebrate with us. But uh We'll ride transport, Brian Cathcart, Canadian Linen, CIM medals. I mean, so many people to thank. I just, congratulations to Jason as much as I don't like him. He, uh, <laughs> he got it done. Just kidding. But uh, anyways, uh, just great to see this Castrol Dodge back in victory lane. And can't forget Mopar, man. Thanks, John. Thanks for everything you guys do. An emotional DJ Kennington, a winner to close out the 2020 season. Emotional for a reason. DJ knows how hard it is to find victory lane, Dave. Now let's take a look at your Leland finishing order. You can see Kevin Lacroix faded a little bit fourth. Jason White, solid top 10 in six. And there you see the latter half of the top 16 finishers. Todd's down with our second place finisher now. Donald Teej, you have experienced some of the frustrations of a brand new race team this year, but today you see the result, a very fast car and a second place result. Oh yeah, of course, but you know, the first uh, first race, uh, I think uh, we got a win on my mind because uh, the car was quick and uh, the, rear, the rear tire went out, you know, half, half with the, the, the 125 laps, so uh, we went at the back. We changed a couple of things because we thought that the setup wasn't as good and, uh, you know, we come back. The car was good at the end, finished second. We're proud, you know, uh, those teams uh, worked very hard since the beginning of the season and uh, we didn't have the result uh, that we want. But uh, with a second place today, that's uh, almost a win. And there is your champion for 2020. Jason Hathaway is moving. As we take a look at your WeatherTech final point standings, 14 points, the difference at the end of the day. TJ Kennington up in the third spot, LP Dumlin fourth with Donald Teach rounding out the top five. Let's head down to a big time celebration. He does the donuts, but he's not over revving the engine. He doesn't want to damage the parts and pieces in that Kubota Chevrolet, but he finds his marks in victory lane. It's a championship victory lane as Jason Hathaway gets set to unbuckle. <laughs> Sherry Putnam on the scene to put the championship sign on the roof of the car, and Jason's about to climb out. Jason Hathaway climbs out of that number three car. The confetti flies. He holds the champion's flag. He finishes the season with a podium finish. It is enough to secure him top spot in the 2020 NASCAR Pinty Series Fan Cave Challenge. It is a championship that Jason and his team have worked long and hard for. He's going to take a minute and celebrate and get congratulations. Jason, it's been emotional when you've won races previously. It's been emotional this season. 
what are the emotions that are going through your head right now as you've secured the championship? Very special. I've been doing this too long, I think. <laughs> Pretty cool. Took us a long time to get here, but uh, we're all good. We're here. Jason, talk about how hard this team worked to be ready for this season and to be able to capitalize today. Yeah, it was a short season. Like, it was, I think it's probably the toughest deal to win, right? Just no road courses, which, you know, kind of played in my favor a little bit. <clears throat> but actually, I like, I like the road courses, so I don't know about that either. But anyways, it's a short little season, all short tracks. All in Ontario, kind of right up my alley, right? So, um, you know, and it's, it's, you know, there's no errors. You can't have any errors. You can't have one bad race out of six. So we are on the podium, I think, every one, except for we were a little... A little rough up at sunset there that took a win away from us, but that's cool. We, uh, we came out on top, and that was, our, uh, that was our goal. Jason Hathaway, 2020 Pinty's Fan Cave Challenge champion. Yeah! There is no shame whatsoever in letting the emotions take over. Jason Hathaway has been at this game a long, long time. A well-deserved championship for him and the entire Ed Hackinson Racing Team. Big hug from his four kids in victory lane. The Pinty's 125 has been brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. By Fast Eddie Speedwear, get geared up. By Kubota, for Earth, for life, there's a Kubota for every job. And by Quickwick, the world's best fire starters. Go to quickwick.com for your NASCAR discount code. They call it the Orange Express. Jason Hathaway was fantastic in every stop here in 2020. He was right on the money. It was a compact season. It was a ton of work and demanding on the drivers and their patience, Dave. The EHR team has been together for between eight and 10 years, and we salute them, the champions of the NASCAR Pinty Series in 2020. Hashtag redneck. And to make it all official, there's the champ, Jason Hathaway, with Tony Spateri from Pinty. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.